Well, when I was growing up, every boy that I knew wanted a car. And this was the car that I got. This is not like the car that I got. This is the car. 1967 Chevelle Malibu. Now you might look at it now and go, man, you had a car like that? A great American muscle car? <laughs> Back in 1981 and 1982? Well, the thing you gotta remember is everybody had cars like that back then. This was my grandmother's car. My dad had the car before that. By the time I got it in the 80s, it wasn't in too good a shape. And since that last wreck, he has worked here and there over the years and had it worked on and had it painted and had some of the original parts put back on it because I'm going to tell you now, when I wrecked at that time, it was messed up. But how many people do you know have the actual car, their actual first car? Pretty cool. 67 Chevy Malibu. Something about getting that first car, and we all wanted one. Every boy I knew, every guy I knew, we all had like... 60s model Novas and Mustangs and Impalas and all these old cars like this. The newest car any of us had was a 1972. I had one friend, he had a Duster, a Plymouth Duster. <laughs> but anyway, we all had old cars. And uh, the first guy that got one, the very first guy that got a new car, um, he must have failed a grade or something like that because he got one way before all of us. But anyway... He got it and we was all excited because, you know, he got this new car. And within a week, he ran into a big um, light post in a parking lot and totally demolished the whole car. Uh, I would say he totaled it, but none of the cars were worth more than probably about $500. So any wreck you had, was was it was totaled. But um, anyway, we all had these old cars. Yep. No air conditioning. No power steering, but I'm going to tell you what, I put a stereo in it. There's not one in there now, but I had one. Yeah, there was something about having that stereo in there, getting to listen like to the music, any kind of music that you wanted to listen to. That was so awesome. You could get a, if you liked the, you know, if you liked Journey, get you a Journey cassette. You like Led Zeppelin, get you a Led Zeppelin cassette. You like REO Speedwagon? Get you an REO Speedwagon cassette. You could listen to the kind of music, exactly the kind of music you wanted, all you wanted to. That was just the most awesome thing to us. To be able to listen to that music in our car was fantastic. We didn't have, um, you know, smartphones and stuff like that to keep us occupied. This was it. That was it right there. That's what you wanted. And there are kids now, you couldn't get it. I know kids... All they want to do is sit in their room and play games. They don't they don't even want a car. Man, we were ready to kill to get a car. But they don't even care. They don't even want to drive. Man, the day that we could drive, we were driving. Now, this looks like a car that's really fast. It's not really that fast. Uh when we got it, it was in, like I said, it was in pretty bad shape. It was in my grandmother's backyard sitting on four flat tires and wouldn't even hardly start so my dad rebuilt the engine well with used parts that he found in junkyards and um he got the thing running again and it only had a 283 it was eight cylinder but it was a 283 but man every policeman in anywhere that saw this car riding down the road thought i was going 150 and i got all kind of tickets in this car and i might have been once at least once or twice i may have been speeding maybe Yep, and they were a constant source of amusement. We had a lot of fun. Um, we, we'd do stuff like uh, we'd steal each other's beauty rims and stuff like that. I remember one time one guy stole my beauty rims off my wheels, and 
Uh, my dad was looking through every junkyard in Chattanooga trying to buy me some new beauty rims to take care of the old ones, and turned out they were under my seats. He'd played a trick on me and stole them off my car and put them under my seats, and we were always, uh, if we stopped at a red light and we was in front of one of our friends and the light was about to change, we'd jump out and go back there and open up his hood because, you know, you could open the hoods up with those old cars without pulling something on the inside. So then everybody would be blowing their horn at that guy, waiting on him to move, and he'd have to get out of his car and go out there and close his hood. That was fun. We did that kind of thing all the time. Uh, we all had these bucket seats. So if you were all sitting up front, if you had three guys sitting in the front and you stopped at a red light, then the guy on the very end down here, he would uh, duck down so it'd make it look like you and your friend were sitting right next to each other, you know, right next to each other in the car. That was always fun. And we'd just be, man, come on, sit, sit up, sit up. Uh, we enjoyed that. That was a good trick. Yeah, and every one of us, <laughs> We all got these old cars, and by the time we got out of high school, pretty much every one of us had had a wreck. <laughs> every one of us had wrecked our cars, so that wasn't a very good sign. I wrecked this one twice. I wrecked it uh, once in high school, and then uh, right when I got out of college, uh, I had it turned upside down in a ditch, and that was the last time I got to drive this car. As a matter of fact, um, just to back it up to do this video, I had to get my dad to come out here to back it up. You know, it's funny, he let me drive it when I was 16, but now that I'm 50, he won't even let me start the car up and back it up four feet so I can do a video. I guess because he was sitting in the passenger seat when I turned the car upside down that time. I hadn't driven it since then. Oh well, father knows best.